It's a very warm welcome to all our viewers and welcome to a new edition of our program, The Daily Debate, our show bringing you all the latest news and events happening all around the country. Tonight you're in the company of myself and Jimeir and of course we have a lot in store for you in today's episode of the show. Today of course we focus on a monumental event, an event of course marking the great modernization of the tourism sector as well in Egypt and our cultural heritage as well. Today the Grand Egyptian Museum announced uh, and started really its trial operations of its main galleries. A very very important uh, uh, development with the, the Egyptian archaeological potential which of course is unparalleled worldwide uh, boasting millennia of history and of course waiting to be unearthed today the Grand Egyptian Museum uh, was set to begin its trial operation following years of anticipation we have more on this monumental uh, development and event and we will be joined in the studio by our guest for a further in-depth discussion and debate so do stay tuned the Grand Egyptian Museum began its trial operation on Wednesday following years of anticipation as a landmark project and the world's largest archaeological museum dedicated to a single civilization. The gem stands as Egypt's gift to the whole world, showcasing the grandeur of ancient Egyptian heritage in a state-of-the-art facility. Located near the pyramids of Giza, the museum offers an integrated cultural and civilizational experience ensuring visitors can explore Egypt's history through a blend of antiquities and modern technology. The Grand Egyptian Museum spans over 500,000 square meters and will feature over 100,000 artifacts, including the entire collection of King Tutankhamun's treasures, many of which will be displayed for the first time since their discovery. Among the museum's standout features are the Ramses II statue in the ground hall and the hanging obelisk, the first of its kind in the world. Visitors will have access to immersive experiences through virtual reality exhibitions and cutting-edge interactive displays, allowing them to engage with each Egypt's reach past in new and exciting ways. The Grand Egyptian Museum's main galleries take guests on an extraordinary journey through millennia of history spanning from prehistoric times to the Roman era. Visitors will encounter a rich array of artifacts presented within three interconnected themes, kingship, society and beliefs, revealing how these elements shaped the dynamic relationship between ancient Egyptian kings, their subjects and the gods. Beyond its role as a museum, the gem is a comprehensive cultural complex boosting commercial areas, high-end restaurants and advanced conference halls. Notably, it includes a children's museum equipped with modern educational tools designed to cultivate archaeological awareness among young visitors. These elements contribute to a unique offering that combines education, entertainment and culture under one roof. The Grand Egyptian Museum has also received international accolades for its sustainability efforts, earning the EDG GE certification for green building standards and multiple ISO certifications for energy and environmental efficiency. As it opens its doors for this trial phase, the gem is not just a tribute to Egypt's ancient past, but also a symbol of its innovative future. Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, still with you on tonight's edition of the Daily Debate. And we're now delighted to be joined in the studio by our guest, uh, Ms. Rana Iheb, the Heritage Researcher. Rana, thank you so much for coming in this evening and welcome to today's episode of the Daily Debate. Thank you and thank you for an amazing smile. Thank you so much, Ms. Rana. Let me begin now. Today, of course, is the beginning of the uh, experimental or partial or soft opening of the Grand Egyptian Museum. Uh, how do you see the Grand Egyptian Museum as really embodying Egypt's vision? Uh, presenting its heritage in, uh, in a magnificent way as a gift to the whole world. Actually, at this point, I want to, um, to add or uh, talk about 
why the Grand Egyptian Museum is important not only for the Egyptian, it's for all the world. Absolutely. So we are talking about uh, the heritage or the culture of Egypt, that we are talking about um, the significant or the most amazing stories that we can tell to the people around um, about our culture. Mm -hmm. We are talking about the exchange um, for the culture also, for the heritage, for the new ideas, for the new generation, many, many things showing the um, Egyptian vision during the next years through the museum. It's something very important to us for today. Absolutely. Rana, now, in what ways do you see this integrated, uh, you know, cultural and civilizational experience offered by GEM, uh, you know, different from its other global, uh, you know, counterparts and museums all around the world? Actually, when we are talking about the Egyptian Museum uh, in uh, worldwide, we will found that um, no country want to attract the people. They didn't have, or visitors, they didn't have Egyptian Museum. We are talking about England. Europe and America also, mm -hmm. the, if you are searching about the most visited museums, you will find that visits or that museums, it's about um, hosting Egyptian monuments. So now for today, we are talking about a grand Egyptian museum, the biggest in the world, and that's in Egypt. So um, we care more about details, we care about everything inside the, mu the museum, the display. So it's not only a uh, I think uh, something um, normal, it's something abnormal for the world. So it's today we are not talking only about uh, visiting an uh, Egyptian museum to see a one piece or just uh, uh, two pieces. You are talking about um, a massive objects from the ancient Egyptian heritage uh, showing the history of Egypt during thousands of years in one place. So it's important and it's completely different from any other museum in the world. Indeed. And one of uh, the things that really makes this museum special are some of the technical advancements that are being used and have been used in, for example, the museum's lighting, its setup, uh, environmental control, for example, especially because some of the artifacts need this environmental control need certain conditions and specifications to be well preserved. How do they, you know, continue preserving such artifacts in such a, an accurate manner using technological advancement and allowing visitors to enjoy uh, these artifacts in this manner? Actually, this is um, a very important topic mm -hmm. because um, today we are talking about um, um, such a museum like the Grand Egyptian Museum. So, as we mentioned, we care about the de details and mm -hmm. we care about everything. So, um, I, I want just I uh, want to add that uh, the Egyptian Museum, the first uh, green museum in the Middle East and Africa. Absolutely. So, uh, because of the, 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 the vases of the grand area, uh, green area, and also because of the lighting that we are using, the kind of lighting, the kind of, of the preservation of the monuments, even the kind of the showcases that we have for the monuments, um, it's non reflected. And many, many um, details about the bars, about the, the, the lighting system also, because today we have. Um, non-organic and organic items, for example, like the papyrus, the mummies, we have many different things, need the special treatment. Mm -hmm. So each part in the Egyptian museum, the Grand Egyptian Museum, have its special treatment. Mm -hmm. Just about a lot of things and many things for this point special. And there's also specific technological advancement when it comes to touring the Grand okay. Egyptian Museum. So now we have uh, lots of different translations, we have lots of different gadgets and AI, and <laughs> it's very exciting, you know, especially for youngsters. This could be something that will really attract as well a different kind of visitor or generation uh, which would generally be interested to go to a museum. How do you exactly. see the role of AI? Actually, um, for today, we have um, amazing programs that offer by the Grand Egyptian Museum for the children. Mm. So it's not only um, what, when we are talking about this, this generation and they are just caring about the technology, the AI, the Grand Egyptian Museum offered this to them. Mm. So one of the workshops that's offered by the Grand Egyptian Museum is talking about how we can use the AI in ancient Egypt. So it's something funny. And relevant. And exactly. And interesting as well for them. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not a boring thing. You are not just in the museum to hearing some stories and just uh, uh, wait for the people to finish their talk. No, you interact with everything inside the museum. So the workshop that's offered for uh, the children 
going from the four year to 16 years, which is amazing. Actually, we as adults, we need to go through these uh, workshops and uh, interact with the, with the people here. So it's a caring about the children. It's a caring about any researcher in the world. When he wants to do or add anything from his researches, um, it's available. We have in the Grand Egyptian Museum the, the, the largest lapilatory conservator in all the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So it's mentioning a lot of things and different many things for different generations that they can enjoy and they're walking through their graduate. And another yeah. interesting thing as well, um, uh, we've heard reports and seen, you know, some of these galleries that you're talking about are actually almost interactive. They're open, they're open spaces. A lot of people can see, you know, archaeologists at work or uh, restoration projects um, as they are happening. And this is also another a different aspect. People didn't used to see this before. You just see the artifact and it's wonderfully restored <laughs> and on display but now there there's more um, you know attunement to the fact that the, a lot of work goes to display uh, such artifacts and heritage. Yes, actually one of the galleries that's opened uh, we um, in the soft opening we have around uh, 12 galleries mm -hmm. was opened mm -hmm. so one of them when you are working through the monuments you are working in the Egyptian map Wow. <laughs> it's an amazing mm. thing. Mm. You see the ancient Egyptian map with the Nile River, with its seven branches uh, of the Nile River. So you can enjoy in every details with every minute you are in. It's not just only about the hearing and uh, looking at the even at colored pieces. Uh, even it's not uh, a pieces uh, for um, high elite or kings or something important in the history. It's also about enjoying your time. Mm -hmm. um, make it and understanding, understanding understanding the way of life as well of ancient Egyptians. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. Because some people thought that ancient Egyptians leave uh, their morning building the pyramids and going mm -hmm. to the sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> but this is not true mm -hmm. because the society is um, sophisticated. Amazing. Yes. Exactly, sophisticated. amazing. So we have everything. We know how to cook. We know how to enjoy in our life. We have a lot of um, um, a playing, a, a lot of sports actually. We have um, different kinds of societies, levels, uh, education. Um, amazing, amazing things about the Egyptian uh, and the heritage of Egypt in this part. And there's also chronological displays. So we're talking about the different dynasties and chronological order so when you go you have a full experience of understanding right from the very beginning all the way to the Roman era for example exactly mm. so um, for this point mm. um, different museums around the world that they have uh, only a one technique in how to show their um, uh, objects mm. or the antiques or things inside mm. display so in the Grand Egyptian Mu Museum because it's a Grand Egyptian mm -hmm. Museum so uh, we have different uh, things so for example, we have the Grand Staircase and we have the galleries. So the galleries, uh, when we enter, it's going you in a journey in chronological, as you mentioned, with the, from the beginning of the prehistory until the Romans. And when you are inside the gallery itself, it's taking you around a journey. What happened in this dynasty? What happened during this area? Um, a building, um, making materials, uh, doing excavation, a lot of things. Hmm. So. Uh, in the, in the other part, we're going through a different theme, which is about showing you how the king started his life and how it was ended. So this is the difference in the Grand Egyptian Museum. So you will never ever feel you are pouring. And uh, as we mentioned, uh, the lights and uh, the, um, the technology, the hemograms around you everywhere. So you feel you are in the ancient Egyptian life. You mm. feel mm, you back part of their life. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Just you back uh, from uh, 2000 or uh, 7,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we can't discuss the Grand Egyptian Museum without discussing, of course, the significance of uh, King Tutankhamun's gallery and how this is one of the most vital displays at the museum and how, uh, even though it's remained closed so far until the museum's official opening, but there have been lots of uh, tours related uh, to the, 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 the life and the history of uh, the king, the boy king, as he is uh, well known as. Uh, also, there was, holographic, there was a hologram program program 
uh, lots of people went and watched it and it was really amazing. Uh, almost you feel like you're sitting with the boy king. <laughs> so tell me a bit about the significance of this specific gallery, the, the boy king or the golden uh, boy child king. How important is this specific uh, gallery? Actually, it's take us for the, the point before that it's not just chronological thing. So, mm. for example, the gallery of King Tutankhamun, uh, mm. which is something amazing when we are talking about the most amazing tomb in the world. Mm. So, um, uh, in this gallery, we will have more than a 5,000 piece. So, um, this is the first thing, and it will show at the first time, being, uh, after the exit, uh, excavate the tomb, everything related to the King Tutankhamun will be again in one place. In one piece, yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So we have his amazing golden mask, we have his uh, golden coffins, and we have uh, his um, uh, jewelries and just extra things. There's <laughs> modes of transport and bedding and everything, exactly. basically. Everything mm. inside the room. And actually, the surprising thing, it will have also his mummy. So it's moved from Luxor to here to be um, displayed display in, mm. the, in the gallery here. Mm. So it's something amazing. Just imagine you are walking through the tomb. It feels like you are in Luxor city. And just um, see everything that's related to the king Tutankhamun, which is amazing. And knowing more about its history and ex uh, its excavation story, why it's um, considered as the most important or the most amazing tomb in the Egyptian history because everything in the Egyptian history piece is amazing. But why especially this uh, tomb or uh, uh, this uh, jewelries of the king? So it will host for the first time in a place. And I want to add, this is not the only gallery will be waited until um, the official uh, okay. opening. Mm -hmm. uh, we have also um, the, um, the boats of uh, uh, some boats of uh, King uh, Khufu, mm. uh, which is around the pyramid. It's also moved there. And it's fantastic thing mm. so we have more um, galleries will be during the uh, open during the official opening of the Grand Egyptian Museum. Indeed I mean people that have visited uh, you know the, the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir Square before uh, were really really amazed at some of the things that they've seen and the collections that were on display and I know lots of pieces were moved as well from uh, the Tahrir Museum the Egyptian Museum to the Grand Egyptian Museum and this brings together the collection as you're saying over 5,000 pieces for the boy uh, king <laughs> Uh, that in itself needs more than a day. I mean, and I know there's, uh, for the visits, there's programs where you can buy a ticket for two or three days mm -hmm. because I believe one day is not really sufficient to cover everything in the museum. Is that correct? Yes, mm -hmm. this is true. Um, the Ministry of Tourism and Antiquity is doing a kind of um, um, special tickets mm -hmm. if you are, want to spend more time in Cairo. So through three uh, days, it's giving you a special offer to entering the museum that you want. It's uh, also in Luxor and that's one city. So this is something different. And when we are talking about the Egyptian museum and the Tahrir, because I consider this as my second home, yes. <laughs> for sure, um, we still have amazing pieces inside yes. the Egyptian museum. Like uh, we have also the tomb of uh, Yuya and Thuya. It's, com it's kind of look like the tomb of King Tutankhamun. We have a golden mosque, so we have the, um, the great coffins, and we have um, an offering, a uh, food offering, which is uh, something amazing to see the food and how they are eating their food in that time. Yeah. And also we have the statues of the um, buildings of the great pyramids, King Khufu, Khafra, and Bin Kaura. All of those um, uh, objects are still in the museum in Tahrir. We have amazing um, gallery for the jewelries. We still have amazing things, more than 1,000 pieces in museum and Tahrir. So it's also, you cannot miss this one. Absolutely. And uh, we have also a special thing in that museum that we have uh, the, the mummified animals. For sure, we have the mummified mummies in the uh, Civilization Museum. And we have the animals in the Egyptian Museum and Tahrir to see how the Egyptians at that time care about each animal mm -hmm. in that time. Every single living soul, really. <laughs> Right. Let me ask you uh, some of the main galleries uh, at the Gra back to the Grand Egyptian <laughs> Museum now. Some of the main galleries at the Grand Egyptian Museum uh, are built around themes. 
So, for example, we've got themes of, uh, you know, kingship, uh, society, uh, religious practices, beliefs, uh, contextualizing, you know, the development of ancient Egyptian civilization from prehistoric times all the way to the Roman era. How important is this side of the displays at the Grand Egyptian Museum? Um, for the kingship, uh in this point, we are searching about how the king become a king mm -hmm. because this is a very important. It's not important to be a king. Mm -hmm. And um, we have uh, something very known in the history. Hatshepsut taking the throne from Thutmose the mm third, -hmm. or she is already the, the queen. Mm -hmm. So um, during searching of this history, we have the objects and we have the monument that telling us the story. So in this place, you will find what is the story, what is behind the scenes. Actually, actually taking the throne, I'm just giving an example. So because being a king is not easy. So it needs a lot of things in the history. Um, you should be a, from um, a royal family. It's not only a royal family, it's a royal blood. blood. Mm. Exactly, mm. A, a, a royal blood uh, from the father, from the, to, from the mother. So each one want to tell I'm the king or I'm the son of the God, I'm the daughter of the God. So you are looking to the history and this part. And also for the society, um, how they are leaving uh, the, their cattle, um, their agriculture, the, how they are thinking. And about the belief, something very important because before um, 7,000 years ago, we believe that we have a judgment after death. So it's telling more... Um, history about the beliefs, ancient Egyptian uh, think about the hell and think ab about the heaven. We wrote a pyramid text that's showing um, how you can continue your journey in a peace um, after death. And also we have uh, uh, the coffin text. We have, um, we developed in, in our thoughts the, uh, in the new kingdom and, and the late period. So we have different kinds of boxes, different kinds of spells to just pass easily during the, um, the, the, the native life. So all of this, it's a history telling us how the ancient Egypt. So it's important also to, to have a different galleries that talking about a special topic. So, and also this is in the Grand Egyptian Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people accuse, you know, ancient Egyptians of being obsessed with death or life after death and lots of people believe that they spend their whole lives preparing for their death <laughs> so they can go to their life after death but this isn't really true yes this was a great belief and it was important but they had uh, you know wonderful lives and they had very rich lives and rituals and uh, festivities and oh, sure. uh, lots of different practices not just all focused on the afterlife yes and this is going to the society time mm. so the society time we are talking about how they are spending their day mm. actually um, uh, one of the the things that I love to say every time that we have Egyptian cuisine because some people n say no no this is not Egyptian cuisine but before thousands of years we have in our temple Mm -hmm. and our tombs how we make a cake yes. <laughs> so it's something um, and I want to say that the Egyptian lady is the first lady in the world at telling the people how to make a bread so uh, we I want to talk about a special uh, or a different food that we have it's displayed in the offering tables it's displayed in the tombs and the walls so actually we have a real uh, food in the um, Grand Egyptian Museum so they figured out cooking methods <laughs> yes, as well exactly mm -hmm. Everything actually it's, um, it's available in our uh, heritage. Mm -hmm. So this is about uh, cooking or about Egyptian cuisine. Also, we have a different kind of um, playing activities. That it's something we have a, a special game. It's called Senate. It's looked like a chess play. So um, and it was in that time. It's, it was mentioned as the the, the game of the kings. <laughs> so wow. so this is from thousands of years. And we have it. Uh, two people should be uh, playing this uh, this kind of um, of that. And uh, there is a victory. Ha there is an instruction how we can play it. So um, some people love going to uh, in, in the hunting places uh, with their families, enjoying their time. So. It's a full of activity, mm -hmm. and uh, also like what we have in the in the tombs in the Middle Kingdom, that the tombs showing us the the the, the first uh, scene for the karate game in the world, and how they are moving and how what they are doing, and this is as we considered as an um, uh, actually 
apart from our heritage. So this is very normal. This is the society of ancient Egypt. Yes. They are uh, engineering, for example. They are uh, educate themselves very well. We are. We have astronomers. We have engineers. We have doctors. We have different levels of uh, of life. So how this be became? without having a society, without having um, uh, a, a limitation of that. So for sure we have amazing life. Absolutely right. Let's go uh, to a quick uh, break. We bring you another report on, of course, the monumental development, which is the Grand Egyptian Museum, which has taken years uh, to uh, make and prepare, and of course is expected to attract millions of visitors from all around the world. We go to a short uh, report, and we'll be back for more with our guest here in the studio. Do stay tuned. Egypt's Grand Museum is one of the most significant cultural projects in the world. This monumental development has been years in the making and is expected to attract millions of visitors from around the globe. Positioned as a gateway to Egypt's rich civilization, the gem offers an experience that goes beyond any typical museum. With its blend of advanced technology and ancient history, the museum is set to redefine how visitors engage with Egypt's iconic past. In addition to the complete collection of King Tutankhamun's artifacts, which will be displayed together for the first time since their discovery, the collection displayed in the main galleries can be appreciated both both as individual masterpieces and as part of a broader historical narrative offering an unparalleled exploration of Egypt's rich heritage. Guests can choose to experience the galleries chronologically by focusing on specific themes or by combining both approaches to create personalized journeys. This offers a unique opportunity to witness the development of Egyptian culture from its earliest roots to its complex, vibrant civilization. Other prominent exhibits include the massive statue of Ramses II and other significant monuments. These artifacts will be housed in a carefully controlled environment with advanced lighting and environmental systems ensuring their preservation for future generations. The iconic hanging obelisk greets guests at the museum entrance while inside the majestic grand hall houses the colossal statue of King Ramses II, the victory column of King Merimtah and the statues of uh, Ptolemy King, a queen treasures that vividly connect Egypt's past with the present. The grand staircase adds to the museum's grandeur, featuring over 60 impressive royal statues, columns, and uh, sarcophagi, further enhancing the immersive experience as uh, visitors ascend through ancient Egypt's legacy. The gem is also designed to provide a marvelous experience for visitors, as it is also equipped with conference facilities and virtual reality halls, adding a layer of technological engagement to the visitor experience. As it moves into its trial phase, the gem comprises to be a world-class institution, blending the old with the new and providing an unparalleled cultural and educational experience. Welcome back, uh, ladies and gentlemen, still with you and tonight's edition of the Daily Debate. Once again, we are delighted to be joined in the studio by our guests uh, this evening, Rana Iheb, our heritage researcher. Once again, it's a pleasure to have you with us this Thank evening, you. Rana. Right, so back to the Grand Egyptian Museum. Uh, it is indeed quite grand. So when, when you walk in, there's a very, very uh, grand display. Uh, hanging obelisk at the museum's entrance, and there's a lot of symbolic value to the display. It's not just bits and pieces here yeah. and there. So tell me a bit about uh, the symbolism. So when you enter, there's the grand obelisk symbolizing a connection, uh, you know, between Egypt's ancient past, uh, possibly its future aspirations. What this display means? Actually, uh, you will never ever see in any place in this world like <laughs> a hanging obelisk. <laughs> so um, the idea uh, actually become uh, brilliant when we are moving the obelisk of King Ramses II and we found in the bottom of the obelisk there is the, uh, the, um, the name and the cartouche of the name Ramses II. Mm -hmm. So the idea started why we need to show the people this uh, uh, cartouche from this. So if, what if we bought it in something and it looked like a table. So the idea 
idea started from here. Mm -hmm. So it's not just only to prove this is for the King Ramses II, it's to prove something very amazing. Um, that the Egyptians through the history, or the kings of Egypt through the history, know how to preserve and how to save their things, mm -hmm. their own objects. If I just, uh, I found this obelisk is amazing, and another king ca came, and she just moved the name of King Ramses II, and we have another one. Mm -hmm. So this is a proof. <laughs> this is his. <laughs> exactly, this is mine. Mm -hmm. and, um, well, and also the cartouche here for a reason, because uh, this is before the the entrance yeah. or the main entrance of the Grand Egyptian Museum and when you look at the facade of the gate you will find the name of all Egyptian kings during the history mm -hmm. so um, starting for from the king uh, Senefru, Khufu, Khafra and uh, actually it's completing each other so you can see the name of King Ramses II in the obelisk and you when um, in the entrance also you will see the name of all ancient Egyptian kings or 90-90% from the Egyptian kings their names is there so when you are entering from the entrance now you are in the main hall and you found King Ramses the second book I mean you himself himself personally <laughs> I was just gonna ask you about you know King Ramses the second statue which is at the Grand Hall again c connecting prominent figures connecting treasures really as uh, the victory column of uh, the kings how important do you see as well uh, you know the chronological display in this regard actually uh, when we are talking about the king Ramses mm. II and uh, this is a very very famous king and he telling us a very important message because his face looking where is his tomb mm. actually and uh, after when we just you know, you finishing taking the photo with King Ramses II because we are talking about technology in the Grand Egyptian Museum you will find a photo booth to take a picture with himself <laughs> Mr. Mm. King mm. President mm. Uh, King Ramses II and you will find directly found the, uh, the photo will come to your mail uh, so this is one of the things and when you finish just taking a photo with, uh, with the King Ramses you will find the victory column of Meren Betah and Meren Betah actually he's the son of King Ramses II uh, the message here is this is the grandfather telling a message for the grandchild and we are here talking about their history. Mm -hmm. So um, um, the victory column, uh, King Ramses II actually uh, ruled Egypt for a long time. It's more than uh, 60 years. And the King Merim with his uh, with co-parency with a uh, co-ruler with uh, King Ramses and he ruled only after his father's death, he ruled only for um, uh, 70 or sorry 11 years. So this is not a large uh, time or not a big uh, time but he actually did amazing things with the military uh, uh, wars and um, for that reason we have this uh, victory column the mm -hmm. victory column one of the most amazing and fantastic things that when we are we asking about the weight it's uh, around more than 15 tons so it's something, Quite heavy. Mm. <laughs> something very big mm. and it's easy for ancient Egypt at that time to move such a weight. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it's it's very it. easy for us. Uh -huh. So um, um, this is the point here. This is the message that we are um, um, giving the history for the people uh, after us. Our ancestors leave a strong message. Those are the Egyptians who can uh, protect their lands from thousands of years and we are visiting them today to remember this is our land from thousands of years. Absolutely. Right, Rana, now uh, again, uh, you know, talking about some of the features of the Grand Egyptian Museum, the Grand Staircase. We were talking about over 60 royal statues and uh, sarcophagi creating an in immersive experience. Really, it's, it's very overwhelming because you don't know, you know, how much to take in. And it's, it's really a, a historical narrative uh, that is quite magnificent. So tell me a bit about the idea of the Grand Staircase. Yes, now we are finishing the entrance mm. and finishing the, uh, uh, the statue of King Ramses, mm. the column of uh, Meren Betah. And the uh, right side, you will find the, the, um, the area of the modern area, like the shops and uh, um, the Egyptian brands there. And then the left side, you will find a grand staircase. Mm -hmm. 
during the grand staircase you um, you can actually go by walk and it's not um, that kind of um, um, tired when you are going wet but if you didn't like to go to the staircase you have the the ramp and the ramp also you can enjoy as much as you are walking be, uh, inside the, moving, through yes. the, the statues mm -hmm. but the um, the statues here or the objects in the grand staircase is telling us different story it's telling us how the king was born and what he did in his life when he take the um, the rulement of the of the leadership of Egypt then what he's doing with the guts uh, with the worship and he, how he can treat his people then because he's thinking in the life after death we will found the sarcophagus and we will found also the tombs uh, the obelisks and the columns from the tombs and temples and you it will um, this the end of the, the life king and it will end with a large scene panorama to see the pyramids the lie the, the place of the death so here is the idea so um, after you going and walking and hearing history and searching about the history it will end it with amazing view of the pyramids mm -hmm. which is a one of the ancient wonders the so yes, all of that mentioning the narrative story or the heritage story of the ancient Egyptian. So just taking the photos with the pyramid from, uh, from the glass, it's an amazing thing. And it's not the end of the, um, the story. It's, it's actually a part from the story that we are continuing today. Mm. For this reason, we have the Grand Egyptian. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, you mentioned, uh, of course, the Grand Staircase. You mentioned the ramps. You mentioned the elevators. And it's worth mentioning that uh, a wonderful thing about the Grand Egyptian uh, Museum is accessibility uh, accessibility for people who uh, could be older uh, the older generation are not able to exert a lot of physical activity or people with special needs and disabilities etc and this is very important because a lot of the visitors that could you know want to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum are usually could be uh, from the older generation or uh, uh, maybe retirees uh, tourists uh, retiring and coming to enjoy the fruits of their hard-earned uh, labor etc how important do you see accessibility how accessible is uh, the museum for all different different uh, diverse tourists. Actually, I want to add, this is not only the vision for the Grand Egyptian Museum, it's the vision for, uh, from the Egyptian country to all the museums around Egypt. Mm -hmm. So we care, about, uh, we care about the part of accessibility, mm -hmm. how we can uh, different ages enjoy their life there. Also, we are want to talk about the, um, uh, the uh, disability there and um, uh, a visual, uh, the people who have a problem with their visual uh, scene also, we have uh, the prior um, labels, so it's accessibility inside the Grand Egyptian Museum is completely different as it's giving you smooth walking in the Egyptian Museum um, if you prefer the elevator, if you, if you prefer the ramps, if you prefer to go uh, by walk. So all of that, it's available uh, to enjoy the, the time there. Indeed. Rana, I, I want to ask you about uh, the impact. How do you see the impact? Uh, how do you foresee? the Grand Egyptian uh, Museum and its impact on uh, tourism, specifically the tourism industry. Uh, of course, tourism is an industry. In Egypt, it creates uh, other opportunities, job opportunities. It gets other sectors in the economy as well working. So how do you see a change when it comes to Egyptian tourism as a result of the Grand Egyptian Tourism uh, Museum? Um, actually, uh, for the Grand Egyptian Museum, we expect around, after the, the official opening uh, of the museum, we expect around a 10 million visitor yearly. So, um, yes, it's a massive thing um, because Today we are targeting more than uh, a, a, 14, um, a 14 million uh, visitors in Egypt. So for the Grand Egyptian Museum, for the people he, who love the Egyptian civilization and they are going around all the world to see only uh, one object or two objects, now it's available in the Grand Egyptian Museum. And uh, for sure, um, the tourism industry in general, it's a, uh, we consider it as a, one of the pillars for the Egyptian economy. And uh, it opened uh, doors for a lot of, uh, of workers, for a, a lot of employees who they are caring about the hospitality, they are knowing about the culture of Egypt, about the tourism industry in Egypt, how they are working and actually this is an amazing thing because 
all the Egyptians is very, very welcoming. So um, it's just, for example, if you are working in uh, Aswan streets and uh, you will find the people telling you to welcoming you in their houses and they didn't need anything mm. from you mm. just because you are um, a, a, visitor a tourist on their exactly, land. <laughs> and visiting this place, they are want to show you their food, their drinks, um, their houses. So this is the Egyptian hospitality. That's the world is talking about it all the time so we are here and uh, we are improve ourselves time by time mm, actually for the grand egyptian museum uh, itself if we are talking about this project the project started before or the first stone that we bought in the, in the grand egyptian museum is before 20 years mm. and the, during just uh, the last five years we are uh, doing a kind many different opening for the um, uh, for the museum and and each time we found how the people actually want to go and want to go through all the history of that so it's a uh, it's a very nice propaganda for the Egyptian heritage to prove this is our culture, this is our land, and um, if we are not the people who are talking about uh, their heritage, who will be? Absolutely. So this is the idea. Indeed. Now, Rana, um, speaking about marketing and preparation for this Grand Egyptian Museum, uh, the Egyptian state has uh, taken part in many marketing campaigns and has uh, done very different strategies, you know, to campaign uh, and attract uh, more noise when it comes to the Grand Egyptian Museum, one of which is lending out uh, pieces uh, to go on tour, for example, a piece or two, uh, visiting several countries from the United Kingdom to France to the United States uh, and back uh, to Egypt. Uh, just to show if this is the magnificent little piece that you've seen in your country, <laughs> imagine what we have back home. Uh, how do you see such campaigns and marketing ideas uh, in, you know, really creating awareness amongst potential visitors on the magnificence of the collections here? Actually, um, this is a, a very smart mm -hmm. <laughs> marketing idea. tool. Yeah. Like what we have done when we are moving the mummies from the, uh, the Egyptian mm. Museum in Tahrir and we uh, they are going um, or rest in peace in the mm. Civilization Museum. Uh, with the Greek propaganda at that time, I, I remember very well, it's not only the people who was walking um, in the streets, it's also about the foreigners when they are hearing the songs and hieroglyphs for mm. the first time, mm. and this is a song, and you will find the, the, um, the children in the streets actually telling this, uh, this is our uh, yes. ancient language, yeah. and this is important. And what we see in Luxor uh, when we opened the, uh, the, the ramp of, uh, uh, between Luxor, uh, Temple of Luxor and Temple of Karnak, and actually it's um, the propaganda of how we show the intangible heritage in the, um, in the show and in the different things. So we're waiting what the Egyptian will do mm -hmm. for the Grand Egyptian Museum for sure it will be something fabulous, something unexpected, and uh, something um, uh, related with the Egyptian heritage. And when we are talking about the Egyptian heritage, we are not talking about the city. Because as you see, we are developed uh, very well. We know how to use the technology. But when you are going to Upper Egypt, and when you are going to the villages of Egypt, this is the real heritage. Those are the people who care more about everything. So I think that it will be something related to um, our simple uh, life, our amazing uh, philosophy of ancient Egypt and its heritage and its history. So. That will be something amazing. Absolutely, sure. and something uh, indeed to look forward to. Um, in your opinion, do you see you know, future collaborations with other museums, uh, global museums around the world in the near future to further you know, the Grand Egyptian Museum's uh, uh, cultural heritage and strategy as well of sharing this heritage? Actually, we have in the, in the Grand Egyptian Museum also uh, different uh, galleries that's for the exhibition uh, museums that we um, bring some pieces from different museums in the world to have in our uh, museum. Uh, like what we have um, also with the aborts from the King Tutankhamun, it's going around the world. And for King Ramses II, it's uh, objects going around the world. Also, we have in our museums here uh, rooms is, uh, for display, different ant uh, antiques and objects from also another world. It's not only that, it's about the art in general 
how we are caring about different arts, special art, and that, and also we, it will be also host in the Grand Egyptian Museum for sure. Mm -hmm. And this is very important because it's all about cultural exchange, exactly. really. It's about it's a learning curve sure. uh, for everybody who's visiting. Right, uh, we're running out of time, so I just want to get uh, some more. Um, more information out of you. Let me ask you about the whole experience. Now, uh, there is a pathway that's going to be linking, uh, you know, the pyramids to the Grand Egyptian Museum, like a walkway. Okay. Uh, there'll be shops and uh, coffee shops and uh, an opportunity for a visitor to spend the whole day in the area with meals available, etc. How do you see the whole setup and the whole development of the Giza Plateau area? Actually, uh, we are talking about now. Um, something different. We are talking about the development of the uh, Giza pyramids in general. So it will be completely changed, the area there. So the entrance will be from the Rue de Fayoum. It's not from uh, Al Haram. Mm. So when you are going inside, it will be not the cars entered the, the area itself. It will be electric cars and going to the three pyramids was a different way. Uh, talking about the connected places from the uh, Grand Egyptian Museum and the pyramid, this is just an, uh, it's just an idea, but it's not we have in the in the real uh, things or the real map. It's just an idea, but um, we will see how it, it will be uh, going this uh, time. But we are talking about it will be a connected or easy to walk from the pyramid. It's not a need to go through all of the streets to go. It just um, you will going easily through all of these parts. And um, we are talking about uh, uh, the. As I mentioned, from the uh, view of the Grand Staircase, you will see the pyramid. Uh, the, uh, the whole area will be changed in a different way because, as we mentioned, we are a green area now. We are yeah. the Green Museum, so we will save everything in a good place. And, of course, uh, the, the Egyptian government has been working a lot on the development of the infrastructure sure. uh, in the area. And this is very important because, at the end of the day, what do tourists need? They need accessibility, they need easy traffic, they need, as you said, green technology. This, there's a whole uh, new method and type of thinking when it comes to the development of this area. How do you see the accessibility now uh, to this area? Before it was a, a very heavy trafficked uh, area, uh, but now it's actually not that bad. Um, there's a lot of improvement with the new infrastructure that has been built around. Yes, yeah, so we have the metro, we have the monorail, mm -hmm. and uh, we have the green buses mm -hmm. going there. So yes, um, some people say what well, we will need the infrastructure, but the infrastructure is very important for the traffic at the mm -hmm. beginning because mm -hmm. what the people thought about Cairo when they are visiting, it's very crowded. Now we are walking through the infrastructure and the bridges and um, the monorail, the new lines of the, of the metro uh, or the subway. So for this reason, especially to make the life easy for the Cairo people mm -hmm. who are living here. Right. And also we are talking about the, the metro station. It's especially for the Grand Egyptian Museum. It uh, will be something very great mm. for the students, for the researchers, for the foreigners who mm. live in Egypt, mm. for the tourism, for everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it will be finished. Um, all of that will the official opening of the Grand Museum. Right. Again. Just to wrap up, Rana, if, uh, what message do you have for our viewers uh, from all around the world that are tuned in tonight uh, when it comes to the Grand Egyptian Museum? How can you invite them to come and visit? Actually, uh, Egypt is one of the most amazing places that you will visit in your life because anything you need you have we have the um, uh, if you want to go to the safari and enjoy the life in the desert we have if you want to enjoy with the sky and see we have actually two seas the Mediterranean Sea and the Red Sea and if you like the green area for sure we have amazing island here in, um, in, in Cairo and Aswan and Luxor so anything you need you have here in Egypt Actually, we have a, well, a, a very nice hospitality and welcoming. So it's, um, it's your home at the beginning. Just enjoying your life, and we are waiting you to visit the Grand Egyptian Museum. Wonderful. <laughs> On that very wonderful and positive note, I'd like to thank you very, very much, uh, Rona Ehab, our heritage researcher and our guest for this evening on the Daily Debate. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming thank in this you, evening. Dear. Thank you so much, Rona. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have for today's edition of the Daily Debate. We do hope you have enjoyed it. You're in the company of myself, Angie Meher. Thank you for watching.